Have you met the abandoned 1962 AMC Rambler Classic Deluxe? A lot of people have, and they've been following this project car over on the regular Freeman's Garage channel. But there's a lot of people that still don't know it exists, and I am in love with it. So that's why I'm here on the Freeman's Garage Extra channel. Just tr just trying to show it off a little bit, you know, drum up some interest here. I'm Freeman, by the way, in case we're meeting for the first time. So yeah, this is my abandoned, like that word, abandoned. It really was abandoned, it is true. 1962 AMC Rambler Classic Deluxe, made by AMC, but at this time Rambler was its own brand. Classic is the model, and Deluxe is the trim package. The badging for that is on the back of the car. We'll work our way over there in a minute here. But yeah, I just, I just want to share this car with more people because it's been a really fun project. It's a neat car, and this is actually a small car at the time, even though it's, it's bigger than most cars being manufactured today. It, you know, it's not a small car, but it's definitely smaller than that land yacht 56 Chevy over there a lot smaller and this car I got from well it was in kind of a farm type setting outside of Austin Texas it's a very solid Texas car and it's got a Nash designed engine this is the original engine it's a Nash designed engine designed sometime in the 1930s or 40s I think late 30s, early 40s, somewhere in there. It's kind of kind of debatable from the information I have, but it's an old engine design. And yes, in 1962, they were putting these in these cars. Still, great engine. There's just a, a few things about it that's kind of different compared to, you know, things like maybe that that 1980s Chevy small block over there is that this 196 cubic inch straight six did not come from the factory with an oil filter. This is actually, well, th this plate here and the steel tubing, well, the oil lines, it's just, it's steel tubing and that was an option or an add-on after. So it didn't come with a filter originally. Um, there was a rudimentary type filtration system behind these push rod covers just kind of these pits that sludge can uh, fall into and on the regular Freeman's Garage channel there's a bunch of links in the video description to tons of videos with this car we actually took those side covers off and we cleaned out all that sludge and that design you know that comes from before engine oils, motor oil with detergents and all that kind of stuff. And one thing that's neat too is that dual circuit brakes were not mandated by the feds until 67, but here in 62, AMC, the, I almost said fashion forward, safety forward company, they put dual circuit brakes. And that, we rebuilt that master cylinder in Freeman's garage and it was not easy. And we built all the brake lines on this car, all brand new. And we rebuilt some of the uh, original wheel cylinders on this car. Some of them we couldn't save. So some are modern replacements, but yeah, I like that, that simple grill, chrome bumper up front, chrome bumper in the back. And, oh, I should point this out too. There's also, we rebuilt We rebuilt the carburetor on Freeman's Garage. That was a, a unique process in itself. Great video on that. And right now we're actually in between two videos with this car. I actually just finished filming a video where I was finishing up some, some brake stuff and in a minute here, I'm going to start filming a, a new video where we got to get the transmission pan off and it's going to be, a, it's not a, as simple as just dropping the pan. And by the time you see this video, all this stuff is probably already out there 
to view. Links are in the description. And you can see there's brake fluid all over the place from the bleeding we were doing. Now, one, the one issue though, you and I are going to check this together, where that brand new hand-built steel line, I love these green lights, and that brand new rubber hose come together, we were leaking there, okay? We rebuilt this entire brake system and got the, the brakes bled. And we were a little spongy still. And we were leaking up here. And I've tightened it up to the point where if it still leaks, we are in some serious doo-doo because I cannot tighten it. If we go any tighter on that, it's it's going to be stripped out. There's there's no two ways about it. That's for gosh darn sure. So let's look at this right now. The car's been sitting overnight. Are we leaking? No, we're not. Thank goodness. Oh, <laughs> that's a relief. And I don't see any. Yeah, I don't see any fluid anywhere on the on the garage floor underneath the other corners. So I think we're good. Oh, here's one of the neatest things about this car. These seats, you know, that's not where you would have them positioned when you drive them. Well, there's more than one neat thing about this car. And again, if you're already a regular Freeman's Garage viewer and Freeman's Garage Extra viewer. You've spent a lot of time working on this car with me, but this is more for people who, you know, haven't seen the car yet. These, these seats are called airliner recliner seats. You slide them all the way forward and then you tip the back, all the, the back of the seat all the way down and they claim it's a queen size bed. Hey, the traveling salesman, um, well, yeah, there, there's the classic joke of if you were a father of teenage daughters, you, you wouldn't get them a Rambler, or you wouldn't let them date boys with Ramblers, you know, all that, that kind of, there's all those kinds of jokes out there. But I cannot wait, because it's not going to be long, and if, by the time you watch this video, it might already have happened. Just go check the link for descriptions or the description for video links. We're almost to the point where we're getting this car back on the road for the first time since 1975. There's gonna be a test drive, and then I wanna take it on an overnight trip, and I'm gonna take advantage of the airliner recliner seats, just like it's 1962, my friend. I'm a traveling dictionary salesman. Moving on to the transmission, push button transmission. It's a Borg Warner Flashomatic three speed transmission. So you can start out in D1 and that means you'll start in first gear or you can push D2 and that means that you'll start out in the second gear. So you'll start out in second and then shift to third. And we'll, we'll we're going to get into this, more into this on Freeman's Garage, on the regular Freeman's Garage channel. But there's technically no park position for the transmission, but you have a parking brake. It's just subscribe to Freeman's Garage and Freeman's Garage Extra, and we're going to go through all that together. But yeah, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait to play with that. And we even got a radio in here. This thing's going to be sweet. Maybe I'll cover this before I sleep on it. I don't know. I don't want to get gingivitis. But yeah, there is a lot more with this car that's cool. We could go on forever. But I'm not trying to take up too much of your time. I just want to show you how cool it is. Oh, and that gas tank, some way, somehow, is spotless inside not a speck of rust i don't know how in the world that worked out like that but let's go around to the other side of the car oh here's how it looks like with the the hood down yeah that's the one th thing on this car, car that's a real bummer 
Oh yeah, the, the hood does sit down flush. It just I have I took the hinge out because because there's a the latch was or the latch was a real pain to get in there and open it and close the hood all the time. Oh, and the glass on this car, other than this spot right there, you can see it in the center of your screen. This glass is all the glass in the car is almost mint. You know, except for well, there's this too. You know, of course it glass of this age and sitting outside for decades it starts to get hazy around the edges but you know nothing you can do about that and there's a little little dingage on that corner but one one of the things that we're going to do with this car after we get it back on the road is we're going to we're going to do a full detail inside and out on this car we're going to buff the chrome oh we're going to polish the chrome we're going to we're going to clean everything. We're going to get all this nastiness off. Yeah, we're going to clean this thing up. And the hubcaps, we'll, we'll try to get any dings out. And these are brand new tires we put on in the video. And the hubcaps look cool. Cool as heck on this car. They are Nido Burlito. And I believe that this car was originally Avalanche White. And somebody had painted this robin egg blue, if you will, over the top of it. Yeah, this, this car is, it's funny because this car, um, I wouldn't put it in, I wouldn't compare it to an, an Edsel in any way, shape, or form, except for maybe the fact that this car they're not really collectible. I mean, they, they are, the clubs are out there. The people are out there for them. I've fallen in love with them, but you know, they're, they're not, they're, they're, they're not Impalas. They're not 56 Chevys, you know, 55, 56, 57 Chevys. You know, they're, they're below a Chevy Nova on the pecking order. You know, um, well, I'm not going to start making too many comparisons because, uh, you know, that could just turn into a bloodbath and I'll say something I don't really mean and, you know, you know what I'm saying? So we'll just, we'll just play it safe and just say that it's not a Corvette, it's not a Bel Air, you know, all that kind of stuff. And what else did I want to to tell you about this? Oh, yeah, this is cool. So look at the, the glass, the, the angle of the windshield, and then the angle of the, the back glass. Some cars are more extreme with this, some 60s car, but this is one of those cars where the back of the car can look like the front, and the front can look like the back. You know, if we weren't in the garage and you can get a better side view, it's pretty neat. And what's really cool too is this flat deck on top of the rear quarters. Look how flat that is. I can just see myself pulling up to the lake, parking next to the lake, popping the trunk, setting my tackle box right here. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm envisioning. And you could consider this a belt line crease. <laughs> All the way down the car. Look at that. Notice how okay, it starts it's it starts here. It goes all the way down in a perfectly straight line. And then you've got these, you got this speed groove right here, almost like a backward speed groove on a 68, 69 Charger door. You know, not, not comparing this to a Dodge Charger, not at all, but you know what I'm saying. And some Ford, 
Fairlane-esque taillights. And there is the deluxe badge. And then another plate in 1875. We got Rambler on the trunk lid. And yeah, that's right. I forgot we're bungee corded back there. I'm such a fan of cars with glass that has these kinds of real hard curves like this. Boy, that'd be a shame if it ever got broken. And you know that glass is probably that thick. One of the many things that I'm trying to do here at Freeman's Garage is to get these cars out in front of as many people as possible to be enjoyed and to keep the spirit alive. Made in USA, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Made in USA, Janesville, Wisconsin. Two Wisconsin cars sitting in here down in Tejas.